Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you the next episode in Advanced Drupal Development. Now before we get going, I want to let you know about a brand new feature on OneStopHowToGuys.com, and that is the ability to favorite videos. So if you have a video that you like to watch all the time and you refer back to it, you can now log into the website, grab a video, any video that you want, um, and you can favorite it just by clicking this here. Now when you favorite it, it's going to drop it right into your profile. So you can see it's right here. So you can favorite any number of videos that you want from any series that you'd like to favorite it from and they're all going to drop right in there. Now, the only thing is, in order to do this, you are going to have to have an account over here at One Stop How To Guys, and that is totally free to do. So head on over here and set up your free account, and you can uh, favorite videos that you refer back to a lot. I just wanted to let you know about that. Um, with that being said, let's get on to today's episode. So what we're going to do today is something that we should have covered a long time ago in practical Drupal development, and that is updating our website. Now, what we need to do here is uh, create a backup of our website. And in order to do that, all we need to do is come to where we have our site saved. We need to copy all of the files of our website and we need to paste them into another directory. So we come over here, we say new folder, we say advanced uh, D, we'll call that advanced Drupal, and we'll paste that in there. Now on top of that, while that's doing that, we need to come over here and if you're using MAMP we need to, to start our uh, our local host backend here and we need to navigate to where our website has been saved our database is. So you can do this on a live host you just need to go to your, your MySQL if you're using some other system just go to where you have the database set up and we need to export that database we're gonna do custom here we're gonna save the output as a file and the only thing here we're going to do is just check this if not exists. And we're going to go ahead and download that. Now while that's downloading, um, we'll just have to sit and wait. It's a small database, so that should be done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to re reports and available updates. From here you can see that we have some items here in red, we have some items here in yellow. Yellow means that there is an update to the code base and that could be for speed, that could be for you know just some minor feature changes or whatever they wanted to do. Now the red on the other hand means security update. Um, and that means that there is a bug that they found that has some security implementations to it and that it needs updated because of those security issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to download all of these modules that are up for update. And that's it. So now that we have those downloaded, we're going to worry about the modules first and then we're going to come back to Drupal. So we're going to go to our downloads folder and we're going to extract all of this stuff that we have here. And then we're going to get rid of the extracted folders just or the uh, zipped folders so that we can see what's going on here. And then we're going to open up a new instance of our finder here if you're in Windows command end or can or if you're on Mac, Command N, if you're in Windows, Control N, and that'll get you a new window here. And we are going to navigate into our website, so we're going to go into Advanced Drupal, Sites, All, Modules, and we are going to look for the four modules that we downloaded, and they are CTools, they are Entity, libraries and views and what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually delete those now if you're on a live web host this is obviously gonna take a little bit longer than what we're doing here on the local host 
and then we're going to replace those with the modules that we downloaded. And that's it. So we're going to come back to our website and we have to navigate to a specific page which is update.php and after we navigate to that Drupal's going to do a couple of things here and it's going to ask us to continue on. It's, it's going to remind us, hey, make a backup of your website because if you don't back up your website and something happens in this upgrade process, you know, you lose connection to the internet, um, something breaks, uh, there was an, a, an incompatibility issue, your site's lost if you have no backup. You cannot go back to a previous state. So that backup is extremely important. That's why we did it. Um, so we're going to continue on here. It says there's one pending update. Now this is only going to tell you there's an update if there's a change in the database. Because we, we've we updated four modules. The code base has been updated on all four of those. But this is only checking for updates to the database. Not to the code files, not to anything like that. Just the database. So we're going to apply this pending update to the database. It's going to do its thing, it's going to say that it's starting the updates, it's going to complete them, and then it's just going to deliver us to a page that says everything's okay. Um, sometimes it might deliver you to a page that says everything's not okay, and then you have to kind of troubleshoot from there, but we, we're we good here. So we're going to head back to the front page, and this may take a second. And we're going to go back to reports and available updates. And what we should see now is that all of those modules are green because everything's up to date. Now we're going to do Drupal Core. And Drupal Core is a little bit of a scary update. And Drupal Core is more vitally important to do a backup when you're updating Core than a module. But um, I would really highly uh, suggest that you do a backup even when you're doing modules. But you can come over here and you should do this for every module that you update and check the release notes. So I'm going to open that in a new tab and it's just going to give us some information about this particular update. And on Core, this is really important because it lets you know that there's been changes made to the robot robots.txt file and the default settings file um, in this particular release. However, upgrading custom versions of these files to incorporate the above changes is recommended but not required. So for us in particular, we're um, not going to do these. Uh, we'll do the robots. We're not going to do the default settings because it's just uh, we're just going to kind of go through this pretty quickly. You can see that they've added a new editor config file, and no changes have been made to the HT access or web config files. So if we come over here to where we downloaded Drupal. We know no changes have been made to HT access. There's nothing that we want to delete out of our sites folder. Our sites folder is super important and you never want to delete that folder off your server because that contains a lot of things pertinent to your particular installation. However, it says that there has been a change to the robots.txt, so we're going to make sure that gets deleted as well, but nothing's been changed changed to web config. So out of the version that we downloaded, we're going to delete those files so they don't accidentally get overwritten, especially that sites directory. And on our live site here, we're going to select everything. We know that we are not replacing the HT access file. We know that we're not replacing the sites folder. And we know that we're not replacing the web config file. So we're going to select everything other than that. And we're going to do the scariest thing that we could possibly do, and that's delete all of those files entirely. So that we should have two files left in our folder here. And if we go back to our website right now, we're going to get this. And that's because our site's gone, completely, 100% gone. So what we're going to do is we are now going to replace all of that with these recently downloaded files. So there we go. And then again, we are going to navigate to update.php. And now this is going to, again, check for any database updates to Drupal Core. And you can see we have three pending updates here. There's some stuff to the field, node, and user modules. And uh, sorry about that. We're going to apply those updates.
Drupal's going to do its update thing. And once this is done, it's going to take us back to that same page that says everything's okay. So we're going to go back to the front page here and we're going to go to the reports page just to make sure that everything is okay. So we're going to go reports, available updates. And what we should see when we get here is that everything is green. And now our site is successfully updated. We are going to have to do this again, probably throughout the course of the development of this site. Now, I'm going to say at this point, when all of these updates come through, I'm just going to say you need to update your website. Uh, we're not going to walk through this process every single time. It's just going to be, you know, if you if you forget how to do it, refer back to this particular video. Um, but occasionally throughout the development of our website, modules are going to need updated. Once we've launched our website, modules are going to need updated. It, it's just kind of how it goes. So, that is how you update modules in Drupal, and that is how you update core in Drupal 7. Um, it's something we should have covered a long time ago, but we now have it out of the way. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, follow me on all the social media networks, but most importantly, head over to onestophowtoguys.com, create your account, um, there's a user forum over there, and now the ability to favorite videos. So guys, I will see you in the next episode. Later.